In this video, we're going to cover some of the things that I incorporate in my Power BI templates to make my development life a lot easier. We're going to go through each one of them and why I use them in the first place. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So creating a template in a form of a Power BI report can save you a lot of time, especially if you create a lot of reports with a lot of sort of repeating features that you typically add in them. As someone who creates a lot of Power BI reports on a regular basis, I have a lot of typical things that I add in usually in a lot of my reports. So things like measures, backgrounds, things like this. And having a Power BI template already pre-created for you with all of these various things preloaded just saves you a lot of time kind of customizing the look and feel of your reports. It's actually so important that I covered it already in one of my videos last year. However, since then, my workflow has slightly changed due to just maturing my workflow, but also because of some of the new features that came out. So today I'm going to recover the new workflow that I use, as well as some of the old things that I still implement to make my life easier. So the first thing that I make sure that my templates have set up already are the option settings menu. So by default, when you install Power BI desktop for the first time, the settings that will be applied will be those settings that are for beginners. However, as you work with Power BI more and more, you'll find that you might want to implement some more complex or advanced features, or maybe you want to disable some features so that you can do some more best practice elements, something like the auto dates time tables. So we're just going to go through quickly some of the settings that I enable or disable. So here I am in my templates uh, demo report here, we're just going to go to file options and settings and options. So the first thing that you, or at least I do is just make sure to disable this auto date time for new files. And that's because we want to use a kind of a unified calendar table, which I'm going to go through as a separate section on this video. The next thing that I just make sure uh, that I enable or disable are the preview features. So these are basically early access features that the Power BI team releases every month. They are, or at least from my perspective, they've never had any sort of report breaking bugs. So maybe they might have some features missing, but typically they either sort of give me new ways to visualize my data. So something like the new card visual or just improve the way that I work with you know, the, the report development. So maybe the model explorer, which lets me kind of customize some of the kind of deeper elements of my metadata. So let's go through some of the other settings that I typically just make sure I enable or disable. So again, as I mentioned, the auto date time, I disable that typically. You also want to make sure you disable auto detect new relationships. It's not really necessary. It's an optional thing, but I prefer to have better control of my relationships, especially when I bring in new tables. I want I don't want Power BI to kind of deciding that for me, just so that I have full control over that. And then under query reduction here, just uh, also typically disable cross highlighting or filtering by default. Again, it's another optional feature, but because I like to have control over all of those elements, I typically just disable this. So this might not apply for you because you might want to be able to cross filter or cross highlight your visuals. And then if you don't like this option, um, you can keep that disabled. There's another option here, which I like enabling. So this one change default visual interaction from cross highlighting to cross filtering. I just find that cross highlighting, especially in most cases, doesn't really work, especially if you have a lot of data points. So I prefer to always be using cross filtering anyway. So this basically changes those default settings uh, when you create filters from visuals to always be cross filtering. Now that's pretty much the settings that I just make sure that I do. So that pretty much covers the settings section. So I'm going to hit OK and 
let's move on to the data model. So let's go through some of the things that I typically set up that helps me out to make my life easier when it comes to data modeling. So as you can see here on the right hand side, we already have a few things set up. Uh, let's start with the first one, which is our calculations uh, measure table. If you've been around the channel for a long time, you'll know that I always set up a measures table here, typically the calculations measure table. And it's basically just a way for me to organize my measures all in one place. So you can put them into folders, but this way I'm able to kind of easily sort them and manage them and not be stuck in their individual tables. As you can see in this measure table, I've already created a few things things that you can potentially use and you might have different measures here that you might be using but these are some of the ones that just pop in my head so you have your alpha for example so this is the hex code for a transparent color which is not available when you or at least in most cases when you change different settings in your report so typically when there is conditional formatting and i want to hide certain elements i can change that into an alpha or refer to this measure and it will just hide that element it could be the label it could be a bar and it gives you a lot of ways to kind of customize the look and feel of your reports the next thing is the timestamp, which basically is just what it is. So it just gives me the current timestamp as of now. So it's useful if you are, you know, sending or sharing reports around. It just either add it as part of your subtitle or part of your title. And it's a good way to just timestamp your reports so that people know how fresh or when that report was last run. Next, let's move on to the calendar table. Now, again, the calendar table is one of the kind of best practices that I always tell people to make sure that they have because it gives you a lot of ways and dimensions to play around with your dates or your time intelligence calculations by just having and setting up a calendar table. Now, I already created a bunch of videos about how to create calendar tables in a number of different ways. So we're not gonna go through that today, but the important thing is that to have the calendar table already set up. The calendar table will always stay the same. They will be static and it will always have all of those different dimensions. So why have to recreate it every time you have to create a new report? Just simply create one ready for you so that you can simply start working on your time intelligence stuff straight away. The next thing here that is available is the calculation groups. I named this one time intelligence. Now calculation groups, it's not really a new feature, but it's a new feature that became more visible in the front end as part of the October 2023 updates. And it's basically a feature that lets you reuse measures. So instead of recreating measures a billion different times, you can simply create a time calculation group for it. So that your other measures can be used in context with that calculation group, saving you some time for having to kind of recreate or rewrite those measures. Now I did cover calculation groups in a separate video if you want to learn more about it, but the point is take advantage of the calculation groups. The one thing that you can already set up even before you start any reports is any time intelligence calculation groups that you might want to use. So at the moment, if we go to the model view under the model tab here, if you look at my calculation items here, I've only created a few, but since we already have the calendar table set up, you can immediately start creating a set of your calculation groups. Typically the ones that people might want to know are, you know, values last month, last quarter, last year, year and year percentage maybe, or versus same period last year. A lot of these measures can be reusable depending on the context. And the beauty with the calculation group is that if and when you want to use them, they're already there for you to start utilizing. So it's really, I think, think it's one of the more key things that I think everyone should set up as part of their templates. If you want to set one up, just it just saves you a lot of time having to remember how to write certain things. You can just use the calculation groups instead. So the next thing that I typically make sure I check are the styling options in the reports. So what I mean by these are the, the fonts, the color schemes, which you can actually change from the view ribbon here on the top. So as you can see, you have a bunch of pre-created themes that you can use, which you know has its own color schemes, fonts, but you can also customize your sort of current theme. So you're able to change different things like color, different elements like text so what should it, how should it show cards 
how should it show visuals? Should it show borders, headers? There are a bunch of things that you can customize here. What's super important here is if you're building reports for organizations where they're using certain branding guidelines, you might want to make sure that you're using the right font uh, type or maybe using the right color schemes. So by creating and setting up a theme, it just makes sure that when you create new visuals in the page, it automatically uses those certain settings. Or when you bring up the color wheel, it will start bringing up the color schemes of the company first, which makes it easy or at least easier to build reports that automatically looks like, you know, what you want it to look like. One trick that I incorporate in a lot of my Power BI reports is by using or incorporating static elements as part of the report background. This way it saves Power BI some loading time. It also gives me a lot more flexibility in what kind of shapes or elements that I want to use in the page. Last year I was using PowerPoint just because it was one of the free tools that I like using. But this year I've started to move more and more to towards like online services. So I've been creating my backgrounds in Canva just because it's really easy to use, but it also gives you a lot of different features that PowerPoint doesn't. So the access to a lot more icons and other tools like, you know, background erasers or, you know, adding borders. And it just gives me a lot more utility. And I also use it to edit my thumbnails for my YouTube videos. So it's kind of a double advantage for me. But if you're starting out, PowerPoint is definitely perfectly okay to use. There are also other tools that I can see like a lot of other report developers use, so Figma. But the overarching point is that you should be thinking about using backgrounds if you want to customize the look and feel of your reports. The last thing that I add on my templates are the typical visual elements that I add in my reports. By creating these at the beginning, it just lets me use the format painter to just copy and paste those settings into my different visual elements. So here I've created one as an example for a KPI card. It's just an example, but this is like maybe a styling choice that I chose for my template. So I wanted to always have this border with rounded corners with this header with this specific color. And what it does is if I create, let's say a new card in this report, as you can see, it doesn't follow that. But if I click and select format painter, it will automatically apply all of those settings from those visuals to the one that I've just created, saving me a lot of time of going through the format pane, changing the colors, adding the borders, which adds up over time. I don't try to overdo this though, so I just create the ones that I would typically use. So your cards, your bar charts, your line charts, your tables, and that way I can just pick and choose which ones I want to use. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to to create your Power BI templates to save you some time when it comes to your report development. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so that it will do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.